Today we're going to talk about some of the Oklahoma proven plant selections for 2014. Now each year some of the educators and professionals in horticulture get together and choose plants that are good for Oklahoma, plants that you will be successful with and uh, that are good hardy plants. We usually choose an annual, a perennial, a shrub, a tree, and then we have a category called the collector's choice. Today we're going to talk about the annual, the perennial, and the shrub. So the first plant we're going to look at is our annual, and this one is called uh, Corkscrew Rush. It's a, a Junca species, uh, and it, the cultivar is Big Twister. And as you can see, all of the stems are really curly and twisty, and as it continues to grow, it's just as this big mass of curly stems. Very attractive, even though it's a small plant, it won't get too much larger than it is now. It is very spectacular in the garden and really commands attention because of the uniqueness of the, the texture. Um, this plant is supposedly a hardy to about zone six or so uh, and, and can be a perennial if, our, if we have the right kind of temperatures and moisture through the winter months. But our experience has been that if it's planted in the ground like it is here, uh, with the dry winters that we can have and the drastic fluctuations in temperatures that it usually acts more as an annual so that's why we chose it as an annual however if you plant this in the water in in water and actually it is a water garden grows in in wet soils and bog gardens but if you plant this in water and have the top or the crown of the plant covered by one to six inches that acts as an insulation will protect the crown of the plant and it'll act as a perennial in a water garden but again in a garden setting in the ground um, typically it's going to uh, not survive our winters. Now the, the stems are also great for use in cut flower arrangements, uh, again providing that very dramatic texture. The perennial for this year is switchgrass, Panicum virgatum. Now switchgrass is actually a very versatile species of, of one of our native grasses. It is uh, one of the original components of the tall grass prairies and is hardy from Texas, Oklahoma, all the way up into Canada. So it's a, a very versatile plant, very cold hardy, and actually is not very picky on the types of soils that it will grow in. It will grow in wet soils or dry soils once it gets established. Now the neat thing about switchgrass is there are a lot of cultivars that are available too. This particular one here is called Northwind, and it has a very upright growth habit, as most of them do. Some of them are a little bit more of a vase shape and spread a little bit more. This one has a bluish green foliage and is very upright and as you can see it can get quite tall. Many of them can get four to five feet tall and then they'll send up in July a panicle of flowers that are very loose and, and uh, airy type of, of flower panicle. Uh, that, depending on the cultivar they can be pinkish in color, um, white and or silvery. Now the foliage color can also vary, again, depending on the cultivars from green to blue-green. There's one called um, Heavy Metal, which has a metallic blue leaf color, just a beautiful plant. And then there are several that may have a little bit of a purplish tinge to them as well. As you go into the fall, they can be also yellow to um, even orangish and reddish in color, depending again on the cultivar. Now, these, these, like I say, switchgrass is very versatile. It will grow in semi-shady areas, um, but in, if you get into heavy shade or really rich soils, they become kind of floppy. So they prefer full sun and actually a little bit more on the lean side. You don't want to over-fertilize them with nitrogen. The shrub for this year is Blue Muffin Viburnum. Now this is a compact form of our native species of Arrowwood Viburnum, Viburnum dentatum. And it's supposed to only get about three to five feet tall and wide, uh, though I have had reports uh, of it getting a little bit larger, but it's still much smaller than the species itself. Now, as with most viburnums, uh, this provides year-round um, interest in the garden. It has the beautiful uh, dark green to bright green foliage uh, during the summer months, very clean, pest-free. And then in the springtime, you get these little tiny clusters of white flowers followed by later on in the summer, late summer and, and early fall, you'll get these, the, the fruits will turn a bluish color. So they're very, quite, they're quite spectacular and the birds love them when they mature. As you can see, they're kind of open, loose clusters and not really huge, but quite showy come, come fall. And then as we move into the fall and, and, and early winter months, the, the foliage will turn 
um, a, a red and uh, orangish color. Um, as with many of the viburnums, uh, they prefer uh, some shade typically, though some of them will tolerate full sun. This one will, will do, uh, probably go either way. It prefers moist growing conditions and, and good soils. However, once it gets well established, it can be quite drought tolerant as well. The Oklahoma proven tree for this year is the desert willow, uh, Chilopsis linearis. And actually the desert willow, uh, the common name, kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like and where it grows. Uh, desert, of course, indicates that it likes the dry, well-drained soils. In fact, its native range is from west, Southern California west to Texas and south to Mexico. But it makes an excellent tree here, especially in western Oklahoma, but can grow throughout the rest of the state as long as you have well-drained soils. The other part of the name, willow, indicates that it has long, narrow leaves. But this is not actually related to the willows. It's in a completely different plant family. Uh, willows, true willows, actually like very wet or very moist soils. You find them growing along stream banks, uh, lakes, rivers, ponds. But this one, as I mentioned, loves really well-drained soils. And again, once it becomes established, it's extremely drought tolerant. So it makes an excellent plant for western Oklahoma and for those who, of you who want that low water use or a zero escape type of landscape. As you can see, it gets, uh, it's kind of a loose, open, gangly tree, and it can reach about 15 to 30 feet tall, depending on the growing conditions and the cultivar that you choose. It has a deep, rich green foliage throughout the summer, uh, pest-free. I've never really seen any uh, insects or diseases on this plant. Uh, the fall color is not really spectacular. Uh, it can be a light yellow color, uh, but nothing real, real fancy. But after the leaves fall at the end of the year, uh, because of that loose, open, gangly growth habit that it has, it actually provides some interest uh, during the winter months. Now the flowers, as you can see, are funnel-shaped flowers. And they can range from white to pink and rose and lavender. And they have purple markings on the inside of the flower. Uh, they're fragrant and they attract uh, bees and other uh, beneficial insects, as well as hummingbirds and other birds. It, some of them do produce seed pods and others are seedless. Those that are seedless actually bloom a little bit longer than the ones that produce seed pods. Uh, their biggest show is uh, early, early to mid-summer and then they bloom sporadically throughout the rest of the year. Uh, they're the, some of the more common cultivars that are available are Bubba and Burgundy. Um, there's a Timeless Beauty, which is a seedless variety, and Arts Seedless, which is a seedless variety. Uh, if you're looking for a tree that's a, a make, you know, for a patio area or for a small specimen tree, this makes a great selection. Mm -hmm.